We're just going to go uh, right ahead with Alex. Um, if you're uh, ready, Alex, then yeah. I will short, shortly introduce you and then um, you can uh, start off. Excellent. Well, uh, you just tell me when and I'll, I'll present my screen. Yeah. Awesome. So let me go ahead and start sharing here. And then this is a hands on keyboard. Uh, just follow along. So for everyone that's here in attendance, this is your time. Uh, so let me go ahead and paste the hyperlink here in the window here for us in the chat. We're just laying you out on a GitHub page here, such as Microsoft PBI workshops. I'm just out here just creating all these one hour series as it seems like it's, uh, you know, catching on for some reason. ALM toolkit an hour. Uh, I'm going to be delivering an admin an hour. So if you're interested in PowerShell, DAX Studio an hour, I'm still just wrapping up here. Uh, but for today, we're going to be concentrating on Tadbur Editor an hour. So I've dropped the link in the chat. Go ahead and click on that now. And just going to walk us through here. So what is Tabular Editor here at the very top? Uh, but really getting started here. So with this setup. So Power BI Desktop, I want you to at least be on the July uh, 2020 version. So if you're not at least on that, please go ahead and upgrade now. Uh, also need you to download Tabular Editor. So here at the very top, Download and install tab or editor. Hold control, press click. This is just a uh, pro tip here to open up a new tab. We're going to see all these minor or major notes. Uh, not important, but what is, is we're going to keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling down to an asset section. So it'll say tab or editor uh, dot installer MSI. So that's just the Microsoft installer or the dot zip. Uh, I know some organizations are having trouble with MSI, just IT, maybe just not letting them come through yet, uh, but I have had success with the .zip. So I'll include that here as well. You copy and paste that. And you'll just want to scroll down. So find that asset section or just type a uh, control F, find that. Cool. Then also the follow along file here. So download and open the sales demo .pbix. Control click, download it. We'll just get a nice fresh clean file here and then we'll go and open that in our Power BI desktop. Whew. All right, so hopefully give me enough time here. Download and install tab router, download uh, the PBIX file, and then let me go and just introduce myself here while your internet is catching up a little bit. Uh, so my name is Alex Powers. I'm a senior intelligence technical specialist here at Microsoft, just located in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Uh, so a nice afternoon here for me and I think a nice evening for some of our attendees today. I'm a Microsoft guy, uh, kind of top to bottom here. So Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert, uh, Associate BI Reporting. I came from Excel, so Power Query, Power Pivot. I just love that those skills are transferable now into Power BI. And then, of course, just everything that has opened up uh, kind of in between like Azure AI uh, and some of the cognitive services. Just a huge fan, kind of the low code or self-service platform. One of the more uh, you know proud moments here, though, just a co-organizer of the St. Louis Power BI user group for about three years now. Just love getting community together, hearing where they're at on their journey. You know, what do they want to learn? What are the things they're interested in? And then just how can we uh, kind of get them there? Just so you know, though, I'm not a just complete Microsoft robot all the time. Uh, despite what my Twitter may appear, I do have personal interest. Uh, so Cat's professional wrestling and data, just a big fan there. So whether it's cat data, professional wrestling data, I'm, I'm just loving it. Uh, admittedly, I probably spend way too much time over in the Power BI subreddit. Uh, so if we have any Reddit fans, definitely hang out over there. You'll probably see my badge. And then uh, always a polarizing topic, but I do enjoy pineapple on my pizza. You know, I just have to be transparent about that. Uh, I should learn some of my leadership today does not like pineapple on their pizza. So a little, little taken aback. Uh, let me know, though, maybe in the chat. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I just need to know that you're out there, that you're interacting with us. Uh, pineapple pizza. Maybe it's a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a puke emoji. But hopefully with that, I've stalled enough for you to get those downloaded, get those installed. So let me jump back over here. We're going to start with our Power BI desktop. So if I jump over here now, external tools, kind of the integration, uh, the important part here, help tab, external tools, a new ribbon, new button, We'll talk about Microsoft, uh, just where we're kind of focused here. So Tabber Editor, DAX Studio, ALM Toolkit, these are really kind of the big three that we're highlighting 
Uh, and then obviously just a lot of great community tools that are also being built. But I know a question that was already proposed, you know, how do I get these into my organization? Uh, you know, maybe my IT is just not allowing them with Tabber Editor. Kind of go back to the page here now. Let me... I'm going to jump back over here. Main page. Right here. Tabro Editor, when downloaded from GitHub, is digitally signed. So if this is a tool that you're excited about after today, uh, and you're thinking about how do I get this inside of my organization, how do I champion this for everyone, it's digitally signed, it's trusted. Uh, so whenever you're talking with your IT leadership, just let them know, yes, these items are digitally signed. So I want to say at this moment, uh, it's both DAX Studio and Tabro Editor that are currently digitally signed. ALM Toolkit, not yet, so that might be a little bit harder of a battle, uh, but speak with your teams. Just tell the story of how great these could be uh, just for your development. So we go ahead and close that, close that. Go ahead and snap this here now. I'll snap my Power BI on the right. Cool, so external tools here at the very top. Uh, if they're currently grayed out, one thing you want to do is you want to go to your file, your options and settings, your options. And then we'll go to our preview features here in just a moment. There we go. Preview features and then store data sets using enhanced metadata format. This is only applicable if you're still on the July or August versions. Uh, if you're now on September, this is no longer a preview feature. It's now in general availability. So you'll no longer have to do it, no longer have to worry about it. But if you are in those previous versions, just go out here and do that preview features, store it out here today. Uh, press OK. It's probably going to ask me to reset. And I'll go ahead and get started here again. So I'll close this. We'll reopen it with the enhanced metadata format. And we'll be uh, off to the races. So let me close that. And then Nikki, I'll hold you, uh, just let me know in the chat. I'm gonna have you monitoring that for us. If anything does come up or if we need to pause at any point in time. Yeah, I will. Awesome, thank you. Cool, so hopefully at this point, you download the file, you've been and uh, enable the enhanced metadata format. We're gonna go to external tools. We're gonna click on that tab or editor button now. Then we wanna set a couple features over here on this side. Go to our file. We'll go to our preferences and tab or editor. And I see these features here. So allow unsupported Power BI features. Uh, if I was to kind of hover above this. Checking this will allow you to edit all Tom objects and properties uh, just when connected to a Power BI data model. All right, so just editing, uh, detect changes, so we'll automatically update the Tabber object model when changes are made just from another application. Um, so it's kind of like a read property. So let's go ahead and select this. We're gonna do editing, and then we're also gonna do reading. So allow unsupported and then detect changes. Press OK. And we'll just go ahead and close out of this here now. And we'll talk about the tabular object model that it was now referencing. So Power BI just sits on top of the analysis services database engine. Uh, so especially as we just think about the overall structure here, the server, uh, we can think about that like our Power BI service, the database being our workspace, all of the models contained there within our data sources. Uh, so very similar to the get data experience, our Power Query, just letting us know which data sources are coming in. And then some of the different elements, such as table, uh, which contains columns, measures, hierarchies. So all just, just the different metadata uh, kind of uh, components here. Relationships uh, you know, between tables and also roles. So thinking like row level security. So our objective here now is we're going to go ahead and extract the underlying metadata from our model. We're going to start by clicking on the tab or editor. And on your local machine, you can create a folder and just title it sales demo if you uh, just using the follow along file. So here I'm going to go to file. I'm going to do a save to folder. Just going to save this here now, my sales demo. Select the folder. 
bottom left hand corner here i see model has now been saved jumping over to our downloads let's do our sales demo folder awesome so i see cultures i see relationships we just talked about our tables double click on tables here now i see all of my tables here within the model uh, kind of looking at maybe the customers table partitions hierarchies columns it's all of just the underlying metadata here within the within the structure it is not exporting the actual data from the model it's just the underlying metadata then we're going to try one more thing here then we're going to do a file we're going to do a save as this time we're going to save this model.bim file so the bim stands for business intelligence model a little redundant but let's go ahead and press save here now and if i drill back here to our model.bim file i'm just going to open this in any text editor uh, so i'm just going to use vs code in this example and we're going to see so we've extracted this model so our tabular object model name uh, i see the compatibility let's get rid of these release notes on the update there we go i see the compatibility level here of power bi so it's level 1520 uh, if you're using azure analysis services you know 1500 uh, sql server could be 14 could be 12 uh, whatever it may be but i see those top tables that we were just talking about so i see my orders uh, i've got my different columns contained within my table so things such as my order ID, which has a data type of N64. Um, also thinking about maybe our relationships. Let so me go ahead and search for that here now. So relationships. Cool. So between my order table and my customer table, customer ID to customer ID, just kind of linking those two. And we also had roles. Uh, so thinking maybe like that row level security. Cool. So I have a row level security built here in my model, just called Florida sales reps. Uh, just anywhere where the state provenance is equal to Florida. I mean, I guess because Power BI is just this massive JSON body. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could I could probably just come out here and maybe copy and paste this, um, you know, put it on the next line and just kind of build this out by hand. Whew. That feels like a lot of accuracy. So why Tabber Editor? Tabber Editor allows us to read the underlying Tom structure here of our Power BI data set. So when we're looking, thinking about our tables, uh, you know, our translations, our roles, I can see my Florida sales reps role. It allows us to have a graphical user interface for the underlying JSON body of our Power BI data set. So I'll pause here. Any questions? Uh, just if you weren't aware that Power BI was sitting on top of an analysis services database, I know this could come as just like a, a big revelation here for you. So I'll pause there. Just have our editors uh, a fantastic kind of utility here to read this JSON body. Awesome. All right. Well, quiet group. Well, we're going to move on then. So our best practice analyzer here now. So I'm going to close this window or just uh, minimize it. I want to talk about my model uh, here on the right hand side. Just, you know, Alex, I'm thinking about this model. It, it's just unusable. <sighs> what do you mean unusable? I mean, uh, I'm seeing the table names, the calendar, the columns. Everything looks great here. Uh, you know, spacing, it's readable. I'm thinking about my end user experiences. That no, I'm sorry, Alex. I had my experts look at this model. Uh, it's just riddled with errors, hundreds of them. We need to go back to the drawing board. I mean, I, I just downloaded this file like two minutes ago. Everyone on the scene, stream saw me download it. There is no way that all these experts came and were able to just dissect this entire model here in that short amount of time. So with that, welcome to the best practice analyzer. So here within Tabber Editor, we're able to take that rich 20 year history of analysis services that Power BI is built on top of. All of these experts, all of their knowledge, all of the lessons learned over that time, 
they've compiled this now into just a simple kind of point and click uh, review your model, show you kind of the best practices that you should be applying. So with that, we're going to go ahead and import these rules now and evaluate our model. First, we're going to navigate to this repository. So just control click if you remember here again. I can see the best practices rules, all of these experts condensed here for me. Uh, if there's something more, maybe you want to contribute, you can come out here, you can learn this. Just the structure for submitting rules. But the important thing here now is going to be this BPA rules dash standard .json. So we're going to click on this now combine rules. I can see all of these here, uh, but really the important part is going to be this raw. So we want to go ahead and click on this. So we get a raw JSON format format, uh, just not the HTML here that's on the page. So if we click raw. I see here now just a raw output. I want to copy this address. Uh, if you want to cheat a little bit, feel free. You can just copy here from the page. Um, but I just want you to see that you do want to press that raw button just as you're introducing this to others in your organization. So here at the very top. I'm going to go to our tools. We're going to go to our manage BPA rules. And then here within our current model, we're going to press add. So include a rule file from a URL. Press OK. And then we're going to paste this JSON here now. I can see this raw.github content. If I click on this, I can see all of the rules that have now been brought in here to evaluate my model. If I press OK, then we're going to go back up here again to tools, best practice analyzer, where you can press F10 if you're a keyboard fan. And we're just on a kind of step number four here now. I can see all of these rules. 190 objects in violation of over 13 best practices rules. So it's all of my deep experts. They've taken a look at this model. They've condensed it here now. They're just telling me where I should look. Uh, I'm going to condense this here, though. So I'm going to press on the collapse all. We're just going to read some of the headers. So column references should be fully qualified. I would agree. Uh, do not use floating point data types. Yes. You know, if you're out in the 16 decimal place precision, that's just way too much. Uh, Power BI loves cardinality. Uh, hide format. Foreign key columns. If I was to expand on this, hover above one of these, it gives me the rules. So columns used on the many side of relationship should be hidden. As a related dimension table is likely the best place to apply a filter. I would agree with that rule. Uh, you know, hide kind of these foreign keys, just rely on your primary. So with this at the very top, I'm going to click on the generate fixed script. Fixed script. Copy the clipboard, paste in the advanced script editor for review. Press OK then. And then we should be on number five here. So I'm going to click on this advanced scripting within Tabber editor. And I'm going to paste this now. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. We're going to zoom in here if you don't mind. We're going to just start reading through this. So I've generated this script. So model dot tables, all right, orders uh, dot columns customer ID is the data column. Uh, it has an is hidden equals true. All right. Uh, so next line, orders, yeah, that's my table, columns, salesperson ID, that's my column. Uh, is hidden equals true. Next one is hidden equals true. All right. Um, so I'm I'm starting to break this down then. So it's telling me that there's a hidden property uh, and we're going to go ahead and change this now from maybe being visible to, to now being hidden. So we're going to set that to true. So if I expand out of my orders table here on the left hand side, you can just use your navigation, you know, uh, up or down, right to expand, left to collapse. So I'm going to expand out my orders. I'm going to run this script here. You can press F5 or just the green button. Very cool. So my customer ID, salesperson ID, order date, expected delivery date, all of those now grayed out and they're now hidden. Jump over to my Power BI desktop. I want to I see what this looks like. 
Mm. Well, that seems interesting. Uh, so customer ID, it's still visible. Uh, salesperson ID is still visible. And over here, it's telling me it's hidden. All right, so I need to actually save the changes back to my model. So step number five here, save our changes. So if I press this control S, or at the very top here, uh, just a little save floppy icon. I don't know why we're still using floppy disk in 2020, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press this save. Right hand side here, instantly hidden. Changes in tabber editor. I wasn't quite ready to, to deploy those yet. I still had more things I wanted to do. Whenever I was ready though, I pressed the save button, control S here if you're a hockey fan, instantly changes those back on my data set. That's pretty cool. So, so Tabra Editor is able to write changes now down to my Power BI data set. Uh, what about the other way though? What if I make changes here within my Power BI data set? Will those be in, uh, inherited up in the Power BI, or I'm sorry, up in Tabra Editor? So step number six, we're gonna right click over here in our orders table, we're gonna do an unhide all. And remember here on the, on the left here, these gray fields, so unhide all. working on it, changes, and they're now dark, they're now black. Interesting. Tabaretter lets us write changes down, uh, and then we can also inherit, so it's able to read changes in Power BI Desktop. That's pretty cool, I like that. So I'm gonna just hit refresh here, uh, hide foreign key columns. I know what they are now, snap, to my uh, left hand side here so i know what the hide foreign key columns is i trust it i don't need to particularly see the script every, every time so i'm going to just press apply fix apply fix instantly grazes out and we remember that last step is we just want to do that control s so we can save back instantly see here working on it our columns are hidden so as you get comfortable with your best practice analyzer, you can obviously read through, you can pick which columns you do or don't want to have hidden here by just pasting the script over. Uh, if they're very innocent ones though, kind of like in this example, the hide key columns isn't gonna hurt my model. Um, you know, it's just, you know, is hidden true or false properties. Press the apply fix, get them cleaned up, move on to the next one. Uh, you're more than fine to do so. So I'm actually gonna close out of this here now. Leave this advanced scripting. Let's get it out of here. And we're going to actually create our own rule now. So objective is create a new rule because I know it's not always the experts. It's not always the best practices. It's sometimes it's our own internal practices that we should be following. So with this, uh, within Tabber Editor, we're going to do tools again. We're going to do manage VPA rules. And we're gonna create a new rule. So on my local machine, rules on my local machine, I'm gonna add a new rule. I'm gonna just call this uh, disable auto time intelligence. The severity is fairly low. I'm just to keep it at one here. My category, those can be uh, kind of dedicated to performance. Uh, I'm gonna avoid reading this entire narrative here for you on the uh, description. Just go ahead and copy and paste this. And then thinking about our model now, right? So if I have any tables for my Tom, so if I have any tables that maybe have a name that starts with and then this date time intelligence pattern, so local date table underscore double quotes, close parenthesis, close parenthesis. And then what is my minimum compatibility level? So remember here, Power BI is sitting on top of that 1520 that we saw uh, just when we were in the Visual Studio. It's fine. Uh, auto date time is only available within the Power BI. So 1200, 1400, 1470, more than fine. I'm going to press OK, though. I've got this new rule that I've built here for my organization. We don't like auto time intelligence. Get rid of it uh, any chance we can. Press OK. I can see my tables here on the left-hand side, these local date tables. 
press tools best practice analyzer disable auto time intelligence our new rule that we just created uh, it's visible and then as we hover above here we can see our description so navigate to the power bi desktops current file properties and disable all right so making a change file options and settings options our current file data load uh, just a good practice honestly global disable it for every new file uh, at least for your current file though data load auto date time get rid of it press ok and then we'll see here in tab editor yep so a change was made outside of the model of tab editor would you like to update the model here losing any changes that's fine press ok yes in this example Local date table is now gone. So we made a change in the desktop. It was able to be read back up in Tabra Editor. Cool. So best practice analyzer. So let me pause there. Any questions, any thoughts? I saw a few emojis just had it exploding here. Just having those experts point and click away is just incredible. Yeah, we had some, uh, some mind blowing uh, reactions um, from some people. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Uh, and yeah, yeah. I actually have uh, one, one question from uh, Jerome. Yeah, um, it's uh, regarding analysis services. Um, at what point would you actually need to move to AS? And when is a model too big for Power BI? Uh, I'm the exact opposite uh, side of that spectrum is when should I move from AS to Power BI? Because the features and functionalities that are unlocked with Power BI, uh, just even in pro examples like composite models where you can do a kind of mixed method of both import and direct query or just the aggregate tables, um, those are functionalities that are not available within uh, kind of Azure analysis services. Um, if you're looking at more of like concurrency, you know, kind of scaling up, scaling down, just control costs. Um, I mean, those are still probably going to be a little bit in Azure analysis services favor, but I think for right now and where we're going with Power BI Premium Gen 2, um, those gaps should no longer exist. So I'm team Power BI though in, uh, in my vote. <laughs> Hopefully that answered the question though. Yeah, I think so. And otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll let you know in the chat. And, uh, awesome. Yep. Thanks, Nikki. So let's talk about just rapid development. Um, you know, we're starting to see some of the benefits here of Tab Editor, which is what the best practices analyzer. Um, but really, I want you to build things faster. So how can we do that? That's going to be through advanced scripting here. And I'll just give the disclaimer right off the bat. Uh, if I was to kind of zoom in here now. The scripting language is C sharp. So I'll give that a moment here. I'll just pause there. I'll let that breathe a little bit. C sharp. Uh, I know nothing about C sharp. What I can tell you though is I am an excellent problem solver. And right now I have a problem that I want to solve. So we're going to start breaking this down. We're going to start building it back up here just with the scripting language. But I just want to give that disclaimer right now. Uh, if you don't know C sharp, that's fine. We'll, we'll kind of work through this together. Close out of my best practice analyzer within the advanced uh, scripting window here within Tabra Editor. We're going to start by writing this first statement. So I'll zoom in here for us. We're going to do selected dot awesome. So I do have some IntelliSense. I do have a helper table. And I've got a couple more here. So calculated column, no, uh, hierarchy, no, measure. So I want to add a measure. So adds a new measure to the table. Uh, my arguments are going to be my name, my expression, and then my display folder. So it's selected dot table dot add measure. Open parenthesis. My first one is my name. So I'm going to call this my total count of. So double quotes here for C sharp. Atnator, it's going to be actually be a plus symbol. So no longer an ampersand if you're thinking about DAX. So a plus symbol here now. Uh, I'm going to use my selected dot table. And then my property is going to be my name. So I'm going to use that name property for thinking about our Tom now. Uh, the expression here. So my second argument, I'm going to say let's do a count rows. Uh, open parenthesis. And I'm going to use a single quote here. Just as a good practice in the event that I may have uh, a table like customer transactions where it has a space in it, just have that single quote. 
Uh, then I'll do a double quote here to wrap it. Concatenator of a plus symbol selected dot table dot name. Concatenator again of the plus. Double quote, single quote, close parenthesis, double quotes. Woo! Not type along with me. Feel free, just copy and paste inside. But I would love for you to build that muscle memory together. And then that third argument here, I'm just going to store it into a display folder. Uh, it's optional. It's up to you. But I'm just going to store mine in a folder that's called measurements. Close that out. Good practice. Semicolon here at the very end. I'm going to select. So remember, I selected uh, a table. I'm going to select orders. And now I'm now going to run this script or press F5 if you're a keyboard fan. Very cool. So if I expand this here now, I have a measurements folder that we just created. Total count of. Yep, and then I concatenated my orders, so the name of the table. And if I was to click on this now, total count of, I can see here my count rows at the very bottom here. We've got our property pages. Expression is count rows of orders. Name, total count of orders. Display folder is my measurements. So this is some of that metadata property that's available to you just through the Tabber object model. Cool, so I've written this now. Um, we've added it, we've broken it down here. My first argument is name. Second argument is my expression. Third argument is our display folder. I now want to go ahead and save this back to my Power BI desktop. So if I remember here, I need to save these changes. Uh, Control S or just press the little floppy disk icon. Very cool, measurements, total count of orders now created. All right, that's pretty cool. So let's jump back over here. I'm just thinking about this now. I'm actually going to undo this. Control Z, just kind of a Control Y, Control Z for edit, undo or redo. I actually want to clean up this script a little bit. I'm kind of noticing I kept writing this selected dot table dot name. So I'm going to delete it. Control A. Let's just start again, building that muscle memory together. Uh, so I'm going to create a variable. So if you're familiar with the DAX variables, very similar here, just a var, uh, table name, call it whatever you want, call it pineapple, uh, equals selected dot table dot name. So that metadata property, my name, or just the uh, semicolon here, selected dot table dot add measure open parenthesis here my first argument was the name of my uh the name of my measure here so i'm going to call it once again total count of double quotes concatenator table name so my var comma my measure so do count rows again single quote here just in the event it has a space double quotes concatenator table name again my var Concatenator of the plus, double quotes, single, close parenthesis, double quotes. Woof. Just a lot of accuracy there. Comma, and then my measurements. Let's close that out here. So I've got this new kind of variable that's storing my name. I'm just reusing that here again and again. If I select orders again, press the green run script, or you can press F5. Measurements, total count of orders, we're good. Very cool. Uh, so let's try this kind of over my customers and employees table then. So I'm going to expand out customers, expand out employees. If I go ahead and select both of these now, because I talked about this rapid development. Run the script. All right, so the selection contains more than one object or type table. The right, I mean, I tried to select two different things at once, I'm just not able to do so. Ah, I love the, the comments here, yes. So what we need to do is, let's just go ahead and delete this again. It's all about the muscle memory here today. Get rid of this. Up here at the very top though, it says samples. And we're gonna do a tutorial to loop through all selected tables. 
All right, so once again, I don't know C sharp. I've got problems though. I need to solve them here. So I need to loop through multiple tables. So it appears that I have this for each. So I've got a loop now. Uh, I store my selected table into a variable that's called table. All right, and then I've got a little bit of comments here. I'm not worried about those. So I'm just gonna delete this for the meantime, uh, just to avoid confusion. Hands back on the keyboard, building that memory, creating my var, my table name. Uh, I'm going to reference my previously selected table. So my table dot name property semicolon my table. So my selected table. I'd like to add a measure. Then a little help from the chat here. I'm trying to remember what was the what were the arguments in add measure? If you could help me out, what were the three arguments in the add measure? I need some help in the chat. What were the three arguments? Oh, I love it. Thank you. Name, expression, folder. Yes. We're starting to get this together here. So total count of our double quotes here, our concatenator of the plus, table name, comma, count rows, open parentheses, single quote, double quote here. Good practice, uh, table space. Table name again, concatenator of the plus, double quotes, single quote, close parentheses, double quotes. Whew. Measurements here in our final. So number 14, if you'd like, just go ahead and follow along here with that. We're gonna run this now, just once again, a nice semicolon here. So if I run this with multiple tables being selected, customers, measurements, also my employees measurements, total count of employees, total count of customers. So I was able to deploy uh, just you know across multiple tables here now. So if I do control S and save our Power BI desktop just to confirm these customers, then also our employees. Just save. Cool. So measurements here, measurements here, measurements here. Control Z. Let's let's undo this because I'll be honest with you. We're probably not going to be doing a lot of like table um, level, you know, looping. It's probably really going to come back to our columns. So let's delete this and we're going to keep building that muscle of memory. Samples, tutorials, loop through all selected columns. All right, I'm feeling better about this C-sharp thing. Um, so for each, so we're going to do a loop. We're going to loop through multiple now. Uh, any column that I select, I'm going to store that into a variable that's called column. Get rid of the screen text, not worry about the comments. So the column where the table, or I'm sorry, the, the table where the column is stored. Let's go ahead and add a measure. My three arguments here is going to be my my name. So I'm going to do just a sum of concatenator of my column period, my name property. So just once again, think about these names uh, that you can also see over here. So like the name, comma, uh, the expression. So my sum, open parentheses. This time we're not going to do the single quote. The double quotes, a plus symbol, and now we're going to use the DAX object full name. So let's zoom in over here. The DAX object full name property provides the fully qualified name of the column, uh, which includes the table name and the column name. So this way, if we had multiple columns in our that shared the same column name, uh, it'll be very explicit here for us. So it'll prefix it with the table name. So sum, let's do column dot DAX object full name concatenator. Double quotes, close parentheses, double quotes, comma. Storing these in our measurements folder. Let's do our semicolon here, semicolon. Just get these ready to go. And then let's select quantity, unit price, and pick quantity here within our sales order lines table. Just keep closing them. So we're going to do quantity, unit price, and pick quantity. We're going to go ahead and press our green button or F5. Measurements, sum of quantity, 
some of unit price, some of pick quantity. Yep. And then uh, at least for those who are maybe jumping in or out, all of this is pre-recorded. So if you'd like to, you can watch it over on YouTube. Uh, just very similar format, but any questions that we have from today, uh, the Power BI Days uh, kind of team here in the Netherlands, they'll have all this content too for you as well. Um, but just letting you know, there's multiple ways, you know, if you have uh, coworkers that weren't able to make it today, just feel free to share this content with them. So you've been able to deploy three different measures. Now, if you remember you know, on the Power BI side, anytime I write a new measure, anytime I make a change, it's that slow, sluggish feeling of Power BI, just I'm waiting to reprocess. Not here. Uh, tab editor, we were able to write three measures. I can instantly just do a control S, save these back to my model. And if we pop over into our sales order lines, measurements table, instantly deploying three different measures. Uh, obviously here just from this simple script. But let's add more. column dot table dot add measure. So we're gonna go ahead and add another one here to our script. Uh, instead of sum, I actually wanna do average of plus symbol for a concatenator, um, column dot name. Hmm, that feels, all right, that, that feels familiar. Um, average open parenthesis here, uh, double quotes, plus symbol, column dot dax, object full name. I definitely feel like I wrote that before. Um, I know what we should have done. We should have maybe stored these into variables. Just that way we can reproduce these activities. I love where your mind is thinking. Uh, you're just looking at the code. We start out not even knowing C sharp. You're now breaking it down, thinking of ways to improve it. That's a challenge for you. Uh, just thinking about how can we update the above code. So we do a plus symbol, double quotes, close parenthesis, comma. We're gonna store these once again in my measurements folder. My colon here at the very end. I'm gonna scroll back out here if you don't mind. So we're gonna go ahead and control Z, get rid of that. We're gonna select our quantity, unit price, and then uh, also our picked quantity. I'm gonna run this script now. Instantly able to create a sum of quantity, average of quantity, sum of unit price, average of unit price, pick quantity. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But you could see like how powerful this could be. Like we were just able to select three different columns, have these scripts here, just deploying six different measures all at once. And I'm a community guy. Uh, so here are things that I'm excited about. If we're thinking about just all of this script, all of this knowledge, this 20 year history of people that have been doing it, I'm gonna go out here and copy this script. Paste over here now. If I remember variables, uh, he calls his a date table, I just call mine a calendar. So I'm gonna update this variable here, that a community generated script. So I'm gonna press calendar, update this now. I'm gonna select my measures. On this script, look at that. Look at how many measures we just generated here. All I did was copied and pasted from our GitHub. All these time intelligence measures. So if you have a long weekend, if you're just thinking about how rapid the development could be here, uh, think about DAXPatterns.com. Maybe someone in this group will just come out here, look at all these patterns and say, how can I translate these into scripts for my organization, uh, you know, for my peers? Just we can always have these just point and click away, just reducing that time for deploying models. And then as well, you can store these uh, just within the custom actions here within Tabber Editor. But I love just the community scripts. If you have any you'd like to submit, uh, obviously just feel free to do so here just through uh, kind of the this, the GitHub repository. But let's jump back up. So any thoughts? I'll, I'll pause here uh, just around 
kind of scripting and some of these possibilities that are now being unlocked uh, just with Tab Editor. I've seen a lot of wows, some thumbs ups, but I love it. Uh, just being able to deploy, what in this example, 36 different DAX measures just in a point and click. Yes, it's, uh, it's really amazing, um, Alex. And we are we're having a great, um, a great comments uh, indeed in the chat. And also a few questions. So um, uh, one is about um, Tablet Editor and Duck Stu Deck Studio. Yeah. Um, are they um, are they going to merge those tools uh, in time? Is the question from Ignacio. And would you recommend to use them both? Uh, yes. I would recommend to use both, uh, at least for right now. Uh, Daniel Odeker, uh, who did create Tabra Editor, you can now execute DAX uh, queries in his program. So you can have DAX results being returned to you. Um, I would say personally, though, at least in terms of like model optimization, uh, kind of performance tuning, DAX Studio is probably going to be a much better uh, kind of better solution. I, in my opinion, I would love it if they came together, uh, you know, is better together and just called themselves Tabware Studio. It'd be incredible, uh, but for right now, I, I would say keep championing both. Yeah, yeah, I would, uh, would too. Yeah. And and then I think I have the million dollar question. Um, <laughs> yeah. Can we can we integrate this all easily in uh, Visual Studio in Git? Uh, you can through the model dot bim. Uh, because remember that's just the underlying uh, JSON body structure, and then from there, um, obviously deploying through the XML endpoint, uh, Power BI. So a little bit more involved. I know that that's an area with the deployment pipelines where they're going to have some more Azure DevOps integrations. Um, so I would say right now, if you run the low code side or kind of the self service side, um, it's not something I would worry about at the moment. But yes, you can get there. Uh, it's just. I don't know that it's worth it. Microsoft may be to the punch. Yeah, okay. And uh, one more, a little bit in-depth question by, from Max. Um, in cases where we use a disconnected table to select a measure, is it possible to change the measure name dynamically? Change the measure name dynamically? Uh, within Power BI Desktop, or might need um, a little more context than that. Yeah, I think in probably a desktop, yes. Yes, and Max says yes, so. No, I don't think you'd be able to do that. Um, yeah, I might need to know a little more context about what you're trying to accomplish there. But like dynamic column headers and like tables and things like that. I mean, Tabular Editor or some of these other tools wouldn't be a good solution. Uh, so here goes. Uh, should we? What should be the minimum technical expertise the user needs to have for with this magic behind the scenes? Um, I would say, at least for Tabber Editor, I I don't know that I would position it to the dashboard in a day crowd. Um, I would prefer that users get to the point where, because oh man, I'm just jumping on the the podium here now. Uh, Power BI is still built as the self service tool. So if we're really looking at the the spectrum of all of us hardcore developers, we have far exceeded the original design and intentions of the desktop application. Uh, and we can see that with Office 365 kind of V1 workspaces. Uh, they're having to build this product in reverse. I think the external tools was just telling the community, have at it. You've fallen in love with the product. You want to do more. You want to do more faster, build things that are much larger uh, in terms of overall size and scope. I think external tools has unlocked all of those capabilities. Um, so that's where I would probably position it as if someone has been delivering solutions within Power BI, so maybe six, nine, 12 month range, and they were pretty comfortable in the desktop, that's when I would maybe start introducing, you know, DAX Studio, uh, Tabular Editor, but for like Microsoft Learn, Dashboard Today person who was just now starting, it's way overwhelming. So that's where I cast my vote. All right, well, let me get through calculation groups here. I know we're just running to the top of the hour. So I'm going to undo this. I just noticed this pattern here year to date, uh, prior year, just way too many. Uh, so I'm going to do Control Z to undo. We're now going to build a calculation group. So we had talked about this just in the, in the previous uh, session here, but I'm going to navigate to my calendar table uh, just to make sure my date 
is visible. It appears that it's grayed out at this moment. My hidden property, I'm going to change it from true to false. I now see it's visible and add a new calculation group. So here within my tables, just right click, uh, create new calculation group, alt plus seven. And then we'll call this just time intelligence. Once again, it's not name dependent. You can call it whatever you'd like. And I'm going to change it from uh, just my name here to time calculation. So I'll double click. F2. There we go. Uh, and then you can do it on the right hand side here as well, but we'll do time calculation. So here on the right, you can also do name. I'm going to create three new calculations here now. So just right click this calculation item, new calculation item, and do it again. One, two, three. So I'm just kind of building that muscle memory and repetition of kind of some of the options here that are available. I'm going to switch from advanced scripting over to expression editor. And we'll notice now that I can go ahead and start writing DAX. Uh, so I'll do calculate. I can see here just some syntax. Fortunately, just no IntelliSense at this time. Uh, that is something that he's targeting at least for his next major release. Um, he just wants to do it right though. So calculate, I'll do a selected measure. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Awesome. So I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, you know, at this moment, just no arguments though. Now let's do a dates MTD. I'll use my calendar, a date column, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. The best code is the kind you can copy and paste. So just copy that, paste it over here. Uh, let's get rid of month to date. We'll just call this, you know, quarter to date. And we'll do year to date here at the very end. So I've got Month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and then I'll update the names here. So just a name here on the right hand side MTD, QTD, and we'll do YTD. Just want to get familiar here with the property pages. And I'm going to actually select all three. Hold control, or hold shift to select adjacent. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to copy this format string. I'm going to paste it here now. So they're all just a uh, currency in this example. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and save these changes back to my Power BI uh, data set. So Control S, pop this into just full screen mode. So one or more of the calculation groups need to be manually refreshed. Let's go ahead and refresh it now. Add a kind of a nice flat uh, matrix here. Let's add some from our calendar. So let's do year, let's do month. You know, we'll even have the day. Why not? Well, definitely not that. All right, much better. Uh, and then I'll use total unit price. Cool. So I got my total unit price. If I drill down. I can see January, I can see February, et cetera, et cetera. My time intelligence uh, calculation group. I'm going to go ahead and drop this now into my columns. Boom. Instantly. That month to date calculation item we created, my quarter to date, my year to date, all created here uh, just within my matrix. I didn't tell it, you know, Go find me the total unit price uh, month to date. Go find me the total unit price quarter to date. I didn't have to explicitly create those measures. Just my time and intelligence. Uh, this uh, this calculation group is able to do it instantly for me. So if I switch total unit price, if I maybe grab, uh, you know, average of quantity in this example, average of quantity month to date, average of quantity quarter to date, year to date, just all of these instantly being able to be created. Uh, you can continue to add more and more. It's just a great way to kind of clean up uh, just the overall, you know, potential spread of some of these time intelligence features uh, just within your model. But just awesome, awesome, awesome way here uh, just to continue to enrich your model. And you can have multiple calculation groups as well, just on top of each other. So with that, let me jump back over just to our content here. Where do you go after this? Um, so continuing your journey, the creator of Tab Redder, he, he did a fantastic series 
uh, just over on the YouTube uh, for Power BI Tips. Ah, there we go. Uh, so watch these. So especially for some of the people that are asking about DevOps, uh, he does have kind of an hour and a half long tutorial on using DevOps and Tabular Editor. Pick which one is most relevant for you today. Uh, if you were excited about scripting, go watch the scripting video. If you want to learn more about best practices, go over there. The advanced scripting, community scripts, script snippets, go out and copy and paste. Uh, any scripts that may be available, it would be an honor for me one day to come out and copy and paste your scripts as well. I'll just let you know right now, I love copying and pasting from our community, uh, especially DAX patterns. And then calculation groups. If you have any uh, you know, more interest in calculation groups, come out to the official Microsoft Docs. Then also SQL BI has been doing a fantastic series as well. Uh, so if any point in time today, you know, you felt like we're moving too fast, all of this has been recorded. So all of this content here, go ahead and pause this here in a second. There we go. So from getting started to your external tools, all of these are pre-recorded. Just kind of broken down here in you know short chunks. Uh, so if you do have any peers that weren't able to make it today, just tell them about this GitHub repository, have them come out, uh, just work from top to bottom. Hopefully it all makes sense for them. But with that, thank you everyone for your time. Uh, this has been fantastic. And any questions you have, uh, feel free to let me know. Wow, Alex, that's, uh, that was great. Um, I don't think we have any uh, more questions in the chat right now. But um, oh, there's just one popping up from Jerome um, oh. on the DA100 exam. Yeah, Microsoft Learn. Uh, I've been hearing just resounding uh, feedback from that new content that's out there um, for the DA100 path. I'll go ahead and drop that in the uh, the chat here. Uh, yep. So if you scroll down, probably to like a you know halfway point in this page, they've got the complete learning path for DA100. Um, it, it's awesome though. I really enjoyed the DA100 exam. Uh, I thought it was much more reflective of a day in the life in a Power BI developer uh, than maybe like the previous exam, which was a little bit more focused on administration, uh, in my personal opinion. Format string. I mean, that's me a much more uh, kind of interesting topic there. Max directs um, maybe something we can take offline. Uh, uh, better than 778. Yep, I would agree, Christian. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, in my own personal opinion. Uh, from finance and accounting to data analyst. I mean, if you're doing finance and accounting, uh, you're already practically a data analyst, in my opinion, um, especially with a lot of these capabilities. I mean, we're all doing numbers and text. <laughs> you may actually be in a better spot, Mohammed. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. If you haven't already, uh, feel free to connect with me online, uh, either over on LinkedIn. I'll drop that into our chats, uh, or follow me over on Twitter. Uh, I'm always active too. So if you shoot me a note, if you have a question, uh, you know, more than likely I can get you a resource back. Um, but really appreciate hanging out today. Uh, I just love the community. So this has been a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, thanks for sharing, um, Alex. Okay, um, so our recordings will be available um, later this uh, day, maybe even. Uh, and thanks, Alex, for uh, for for joining and um, for presenting and sharing the knowledge. And we will have all the all the files also from Ron together in the YouTube um, um, sharings. So you will find everything on uh, on YouTube on the 
recordings. And we're planning our next meetup uh, for November already, so uh, um, watch out for that. So thanks everyone for joining and um, see you later.